Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to our first ever webinar on the KTH admissions process. Uh, my name is Christina, and this is my colleague Kim. Hi. And we are admissions officers here at KTH. Um, during this presentation, we will talk to you about Sweden, Stockholm, studies at KTH, how to apply, and what the next steps with your application uh, will be. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can send them in throughout the presentation and we will be answering them at the end. Uh, so first of all, there are many reasons why you should study at KTH. Uh, you will receive a master's degree from a, one of the top 100 universities in the world. You will acquire an innovative way of looking uh, at problems and an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, you will also spend two years in one of the world's safest and most livable cities in the world. Uh, and who knows, you might possibly even want to stay longer after your studies. So let's start off with a, a few facts about Sweden. Yes, Sweden is known to be an open multicultural society with the tradition of welcoming students from all over the world. There are 10 million people living here, but don't worry, it's not that crowded because Sweden is the largest country, or third largest country in the EU by area. Sweden is known for being a progressive society. And for example, Sweden is ranked fourth in the world when it comes to gender equality, and 17% of Swedes were born in another country. Also, most Swedes speak excellent English, so it makes it easy to get around, even if you don't speak Swedish. As you can see from the pictures, the climate in Sweden varies a lot from summer to winter. The average temperature in January during the winter is minus five degrees Celsius, and the aurora borealis, the northern lights, can be seen uh, as far down in Sweden as in Stockholm. In July, during the summertime, it's about 22 degrees Celsius, and the sun rises around 3 a.m. and sets around 10 p.m. Sweden is also home to many multinational companies like IKEA, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, and Electrolux. Did you know that Sweden is ranked second in the world when it comes to innovation? Uh, a couple of examples of Swedish innovations and inventions are Skype, uh, Spotify, Bluetooth, Tetra Pak, the modern seatbelt, and pacemaker. Now, I'm sure you all know about the Nobel Prize. It originates from Alfred Nobel, a Swedish chemist and engineer who invented dynamite. In the picture in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the Nobel Prize ceremony, which takes place in Stockholm. Christina, can you tell us a little bit more about Stockholm? I can. Well, Stockholm, as you may know, is the capital of Sweden and the heart of Swedish trade, business, and innovation. And it is also home to around 2.1 million people. Uh, the city itself is known for its rich cultural history uh, and closeness to nature with 26 city parks. Uh, the city is built on 14 islands with an archipelago of 24,000 islands uh, stretching out into the Baltic Sea. Uh, Stockholm is a student-friendly city and it is home to around 85,000 students. Uh, and I'm sure you're all wondering what uh, the monthly cost of living as a student in Stockholm is. Uh, and it's around 990 to 1300 US dollars. Uh, the amount depends largely on what type of accommodation you uh, require. But regardless, uh, if you get an apartment in central Stockholm or outside the city centre, the standard is usually very high and public transportation is always uh, close by. So Kim, uh, would you like to tell us about KTH? Sure. Uh, KTH was established in 1827, and the reigning king, uh, Carl XVI Gustav, is the guardian of the university. Since the beginning, KTH has been at the center of many of the technological advances in Sweden. In the early 1950s, for example, uh, you can see in the black and white picture in the top left-hand side of the screen there, uh, the country's first nuclear reactor was installed on campus. Over the last 190 years, KTH has gone on to become one of the most prominent technical universities in Europe, attracting talent from all over the world. KTH has 13,000 full-time students, and of them, around 1,500 are international master's students. KTH also attracts around 2,000 PhD students, and many of them from outside of Sweden. According to the latest QS ranking, KTH is ranked number 98, and within the field of energy, or en engineering and technology, rather, the university is ranked top, uh, top 30 in the world at number 29. Did you know that KTH has had two high profile visits on campus in the last years? Former US President Barack Obama visited KTH to hear about sustainable innovations in 2013. Didn't you get a chance to meet him, Christina? 
Well, I did. No, I didn't. I waved at him and he kind of waved back at me, but that counts, doesn't it? That definitely counts. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Professor Stephen Hawking was also here in 2015, uh, visiting KTH uh, for a conference about the black hole theory. Um, so let's talk about the KTH uh, campus. Well, KTH has uh, four campuses in and around Stockholm. Uh, the main campus is located uh, at the edge of central Stockholm in the Royal National Park, as you can see from the map here. Uh, the campuses are strategically placed to promote cooperation with industry in defined areas. Uh, for example, on the top of the map, you can see uh, our campus, uh, KTH Shista. It's our campus for ICT, Information Communications and Technology Education. Uh, and it's located in the largest uh, ICT cluster in Europe with companies like IBM, Ericsson and Microsoft as neighbors. Uh, and in Stockholm, you're always close to public transportation. So getting between the campuses are, and back to your home is quick and easy. Uh, so Kim, would you like to tell us about how the education system in Sweden works? Yes, uh, master's programs in Sweden are usually two years and are given in English. Uh, the first three terms are course-based and then during the last term yeah, you'll spend doing research for your degree project. Uh, as an international master's student you'll be studying together with Swedish master's students and exchange students. Uh, as you can see uh, KTH offers 60 master's programs in nine different subject areas and we also offer 15 joint master's programs together with other prominent universities worldwide. And in these programs, students usually spend one year at two different universities and receive one master's degree from each. Uh, but first, how do we get started with making a master's application? Well, as you all may know, in Sweden, there is a national online application system uh, for all Swedish universities called University Admissions. And this is where you start your application. Uh, each year, there is one application round for master's studies uh, starting at KTH in the autumn. Uh, applications are open from October 16th to January 15th, uh, so if you haven't already made your application, uh, you still have a few days left. Uh, the first thing, uh, first thing you need to do is to find a program. Uh, they can be found on the KTH website by mid-October. Uh, you can apply for up to four programs. It's important that you prioritize your choices uh, because you can only be admitted to one program. And before applying, be sure to check the uh, program specific admission requirements and you can find these requirements listed uh, under the program descriptions on the KTH website. Uh, next, you need to start preparing your application by gathering the documents uh, that are required for the programs that, they, that you're uh, applying for. Uh, the final step is to submit your application and apply for scholarships. And like I said, most programs are applied for through university admissions with January 15th as the last application day. However, applications for some joint programs uh, are made through other portals uh, and these application deadlines may vary. Uh, after you have received the selection results in April uh, and find out if you're admitted, you need to apply for a residence permit and for accommodation. And then finally, in August, it's time to head to KDH for the introduction days for new students and to start your studies. Uh, great. Uh, let's see. Uh, so one of the most important things to think about is your eligibility. In order to be eligible for a master's studies at KTH, the general requirements are that you must have a bachelor's degree uh, equivalent to a Swedish bachelor's degree or be enrolled in your last year of studies at an internationally recognized university. You must also show your proficiency in English, and you can do this in a variety of ways. Uh, for example, uh, your previous university or upper secondary studies, uh, or a language test, for example, a TOEFL IBT with a score of 90, uh, or IELTS academic score of 6.5. You'll also need to check that you meet the program-specific requirements, and these vary between the programs. Uh, you can find more information on admission requirements uh, for each program, uh, and ways of meeting the language requirements on the KTH website. Um, and now for some practical matters, uh, fees and payment. Uh, Non-EU citizens are generally required to pay an application fee and tuition fees. Um, so first, the application fee is 900 Swedish crowns, and that needs to be paid when you make your application on university admissions. Then, uh, if you're admitted to a full-time program, uh, the full tuition fee for most of our two-year programs is 310,000 Swedish crowns. Um, but uh, KTH offers a range of uh, scholarships, uh, and so 
just to help with the tuition. Uh, every year we offer uh, the KTH scholarship, which is a two year uh, tuition fee waiver. Um, and then uh, we also offer a one year scholarship that you can apply for during your first year of studies. Uh, and this will cover the second year uh, tuition for the program. Uh, you can apply for the KTH scholarship now on our website and it's open for application until the 15th of January. There's also, um, see. There's also the Swedish Institute scholarship, uh, which is uh, from a governmental agency that offers scholarships to international students from certain countries. And these scholarships cover both the tuition fees and the living costs for your stay in Stockholm. These scholarships are awarded to applicants uh, that can demonstrate both academic excellence and strong leadership skills. Uh, we also encourage you to see if there are any external scholarships that are available in your home country. Uh, so to sum up, if you're planning to make an application, please keep in mind that the application deadline is January 15th. Uh, you need to pay the application fee and submit supporting documentation, such as proof of English proficiency, for example, uh, by the 1st of February. And finally, uh, you will receive the notification of selection results from University Admissions uh, on the 6th of April. Uh, so now that we've talked about the admissions process, we would like to welcome uh, one of our student ambassadors, Julia, so that you can get an idea of what's, what it's like to be a student here at KTH. So, welcome. So welcome. Let's do it over here. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Julia. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. I um, work as an international student ambassador for KTH and I also study here. I'm doing my master's in nuclear energy engineering and I'm in my second year. Well, it's great to have you here. Uh, could you tell us what made you choose KTH and your specific program that you're uh, studying? Sure. I chose KTH because I heard a lot about this university when I was studying in Russia. And I know that KTH has a reputation as being a university that provides high quality education at, at an international level. In the nuclear energy engineering program, for example, there's a range of courses that are both theoretical and practical and we get loads of opportunities to meet industry professionals and to visit interesting and relevant places and companies and of course KTH is located in Stockholm and Stockholm is such a vibrant and multicultural city so it gives me great pleasure to be studying and living here. Oh, that's yeah. great. We're happy, we're happy to have you here. <laughs> but what do you think the differences are between studying at KTH and your home university? I think the main difference is the way of teaching. Here at KTH we have a lot of group projects, presentations, um, flipped classrooms where students have to prepare and deliver the lectures. And this way of teaching gives me an opportunity to explore different ways of learning, it gives me an opportunity to improve my presentation skills and work on my self-esteem as well. And um, um, in my home university, for example, we never had group presentations or flipped classrooms where we had to deliver the lectures. So I've really come to appreciate the way of teaching employed at KTH. I think it's a very innovative way of learning. Yeah, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So would you like to tell us a bit more about student life here at KTH? Sure. Um, what sets KTH apart from other universities is their personal approach to education. Classes and seminars are held in smaller rooms and that encourages students to solve problems together. Um, KTH encourages innovative ideas and entrepreneurial spirit among students and that's done both um, as part of their courses but also through services like KTH Innovation for example or the Student Business Incubator Student Inc. And courses consist of seminars, lectures, teamwork assignments, laboratory work and individual studies. And um, generally you have one or two courses um, which gives you an opportunity to focus on one subject at a time. And if there are exams, they will be written at the end of the course. Education at KTH is often done in collaboration with industry, which gives students practical knowledge, but also contacts for their future careers. And KTH has 12 strategic in industry partners um, for deeper collaboration you know, uh, within research and um, education. And if you are, for example, a student of mechanical engineering, the chances are quite high that you can be in contact with big Swedish companies like Saab or Scania during your studies. Uh, KTH has an extensive infrastructure with advanced and top-of-the-art research facilities, 
um, labs and equipment. Um, all students are invited to take part in the introduction session, which takes place before the term starts with some social activities, but also introduction to Swedish society. And your number one contact person, apart from the program director, will be one of the master's coordinators. And there's also other support for those who need it, like, for example, counsel counseling or support for disabilities or health services for students. Yeah. Great. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your position as a student ambassador. Yes. Uh, as a student ambassador, I work a lot with answering uh, questions from prospective students and helping them to make the right decision in terms of the program. And if somebody wants to know, uh, to get an opinion of what current students at KTH think about their studies, they can follow student bloggers or they can ask um, students questions online at the KTH website. They can also find and follow KTH on social media like Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. That's great. I'm sure all of you are interested in hearing about the student perspective. Um, well, thank you, Julia, for telling us about your experiences here. It's so great to hear that you're enjoying your time at KTH so far. Um, here, let's go to the next slide. Um, if you're wondering about your job prospects after you're finished with your studies, uh, here are a few interesting facts for you. 40% uh, of KTH students have a job before graduation, and each year over 500 degree projects are done in collaboration with companies like Ericsson, Saab, and Scania. Over 20% of students get their first job through their degree project. And did you know that KTH is the leading supplier of CEOs for Swedish companies? Uh, KTH is ranked in the top 100 uh, in the QS Graduate Employability Ranking in 2018. Um, and services like KTH Innovation give students support in commercializing their business ideas, and over 14% of KTH alumni go on to start their own company. Uh, once you've completed a master's degree, you can also think about PhD opportunities here at KTH. In fact, 30% uh, of alumni go on to PhD studies, and out of the 2,000 PhD students, over 50% of them have an international background. Uh, Julia, have you thought about your career after KTH? I have. <laughs> <laughs> I know that there are a lot of opportunities in terms of internships and trainee programs in Sweden with big companies. So there is a trainee program happening at the moment with Vattenfall, so I applied to that, and mm -hmm. I'm going through the interview process, so fingers crossed. Oh, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, thank fingers you. crossed. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm sure you have a bright future ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's all uh, the formal information that we wanted to sh uh, share with you today. So now uh, let's take some time for uh, a few questions. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we have a question regarding uh, English tests. Uh, a student says, I'm wondering if it's possible to provide you with my ETS account and password to verify my TOEFL score online if it's uh, if the official mail is late by the deadline. Uh, Christina, did you want to? Well, you should make uh, it possible for uh, university admission to access your uh, TOEFL scores online. Uh, so it's, um, you can follow, there are instructions on university admissions and I encourage you to uh, go onto that website uh, to check how, how um, what the procedure is uh, for you to notify um, ETS so that uh, university admissions will be able to access your uh, scores and to be able to verify them online. Okay, so let's uh, see if there are any more questions. Uh, what time does the application on uh, Monday close? Uh, I believe it's by midnight. Uh, right? I think it's midnight. I think it's um, midnight, yeah. It would probably be uh, midnight in the latest time zone. So what would that be? Maybe Pacific? Sure. Uh, I would check on university admissions, actually, just to double check. Um, yeah. But it should be so that everyone has a chance to apply before midnight. On and please don't wait until the very last minute. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, OK. Uh, what about the standard of living uh, in Stockholm? Um, maybe, maybe Julia, do you want to? Yeah. I find that the standard of living is very high. I live in a student accommodation and it's fantastic. It's much, much better than the accommodation, the student accommodation that we had um, back home. So I think it's very high. Okay, uh, great. Uh, oh, and here's another question, maybe Julia, for you. Uh, will we have time to work? 
Um, I have time to work, <laughs> so I think there is a lot of, I, I wouldn't say a lot, it depends on the program. I think some programs, they require people to study quite a bit, but I'm sure it is possible to find time for a part-time job because there are jobs that allow you to be quite flexible, so you yeah. can work in the evenings, so you will be able to attend lectures during the day and then work part-time in the evenings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, great, uh, let's see. Uh, how about this one? The cost of living in Sweden per month, including everything, food, accommodation and expenses. How does Julia cope? <laughs> <laughs> I think earlier in the presentation, we said it's around 1000 to 1300 US dollars a month. Um, yeah. Do you find that that's? Uh, it's well, let's see. I, I get 10,000 crowns. Uh, per month and my accommodation costs four so I live on six and it works for me mm -hmm. so I don't know how how it translates into dollars US dollars ten thousand crowns how much that that's about one thousand right probably yes. yeah right yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what I get and it works definitely yeah I mean, it's I can't say that I go out every night or I eat out but but there are student discounts exactly in a lot, of, a places lot of places in Stockholm and uh, and like we have the student gym and all of those yeah. types of services as well. So yeah, definitely it definitely works. It's due. Yeah, <laughs> it's doable, right? Uh, okay. Uh, how far is campus from the airport? I would say it's about half an hour, maybe by train or something. Yeah, like from it campus. depends if you decide to take the Orlando Express or a yeah. bus from the airport. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, the bus. Is so it's about either an hour or. 20 minutes depending on how you want to get from the airport it's close uh, but then yeah, there's also close. arrival services where buses will pick up students um, at the beginning of the term yeah. and yeah uh, so you don't really need to worry too much about arranging your own travel yeah. uh, when if you are admitted um, okay uh, let's see there are more questions Um, when will KTH start giving out results? Well, KTH uh, won't give out results, but um, the, not uh, the, the notification of selection results uh, will be published by University Admissions on April 6th. Uh, so you will get this information through your account on University Admissions, so not directly from KTH. Um, great. Okay, here's another question about English tests. Uh, I will have my IELTS certificate on the 19th of January. May I submit it uh, on this date? Well, like we said, the deadline for receipt of all the supporting documentation, uh, including proof of English proficiency, is February 1st. So if uh, you submit your uh, um, like TOEFL test or IELTS test or, uh, well, your proof of English proficiency, uh, proficiency after the 1st of February, there's unfortunately no guarantee that we will uh, or university admissions will be able to consider it. But um, yeah, February 1st is our deadline for most, uh, or actually all of your su uh, supporting yeah. documents. So just make sure that you have everything in by then. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. Well, um, I think if you scroll up, maybe. No. Uh, let's see if there does. Are there any more questions? Uh, how much? How much does Key Teach value my experiences outside of my studies? Will that be taken into account in my application? Well, it depends. Um, it depends on the what selection criteria the program uses. Uh, uh, I would suggest that you check the program specific information um, on the website. You go into uh, you or you check the program uh, description and check the entry requirements, and there you will find what kind of selection uh, selection criteria they will use, and if they will 
uh, uh, take uh, previous experiences like work, work experience, etc., into account. So it differs between the programs. Um, okay, here's one more. Uh, I'm currently in the final year of my bachelor's degree studying in the United Kingdom. Uh, do I have to take the IELTS exams to, pro to prove my English proficiency again, even though I'm completing my bachelor degree in English? No, that won't be necessary. Uh, we can also say that there's uh, information on university admissions that shows which countries need to show proof of, admit, uh, proof of English um, and then what the different documents that you need to submit uh, for each country are. Uh, so it's a good idea to have a look at the website and then just check how to document uh, my English proficiency uh, on university admissions. Yeah, you can find most uh, information there actually. Um, um, okay. so let's questions. see if there are any more questions. Um, okay, here's one about residency. Uh, I have a Swedish personal number and live in Stockholm and will be a Swedish citizen in May. Do I need to pay the application fee uh, and tuition as well? I think you know this. Uh, yeah, uh, no, the answer to that is uh, no, you're not right, required to pay tuition if you're a Swedish, if you become a Swedish citizen or if you have um, a residence permit to be in the EU for other reasons besides uh, studies. Um, so, uh, for those of you who are wondering about your status, uh, again, you can look at university admissions and they actually have a page with information with a variety of scenarios for whatever situation you might be in. So, uh, you should check there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, here's a question about accommodation. Uh, I've learned that in Stockholm, it's very hard to find housing. Do you offer any kind of help for students to find accommodation? Uh, well, we have an office uh, called KTH Accommodation, and for all fee-paying uh, master's students, we do help them find uh, accommodation, and this accommodation is guaranteed for up to 11 months. Um, but it's good to get yourself in a housing queue uh, as well, so that you can uh, guarantee that you'll have somewhere to stay once you get here. Um, but there, I would refer you to uh, the KTH website and just look up accommodations, and then you can find more information on how to register there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, here's a question about the selection process. Uh, how about the selection process? Where does KTH put their preferences for selecting suitable students? Where do they put their preferences? Yeah. I'm not really sure I understand the question. Um, hmm. Well, I would say, uh, if I understand the question correctly, um, how we do our selections in general, uh, and it would be basically if you fulfill the general requirements uh, and then uh, and the specific requirements, uh, most admissions are made based on academic achievements. So those with um, who have applied with the best academic merits would be selected first, uh, if that's how I understand the question. Yeah, and then there is motivation for studies mm -hmm. and uh, previous university also. Uh, but again, this is something that is stated under each program uh, description, like uh, what are the specific admission requirements and how uh, the program makes its uh, selection process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and here's another question about TOEFL exams. Uh, if my TOEFL result is from December 2016, will I need to take a new exam? Uh, no, you don't. Uh, it's valid for two years. Uh, so as long as it can be uh, verified online, then it's fine. So from December 2016, no, you don't have to. As long as you uh, meet the requirements, that is, yeah. Um, okay, uh, here's a question for Julia. Uh, are you studying with a scholarship 
And what do you think is the most important thing to do when applying for a scholarship? I'm not, I don't have a scholarship, so <laughs> I, I'm not sure what are the requirements for the scholarship, to be honest. Okay, uh, well, I can say that for the KTH scholarship, uh, these scholarships are based on uh, mostly academic achievement. Uh, so that means those who apply with the highest grades uh, ac and academic merits would be selected first. Um, and it, we offer about 30 of these scholarships every year. Um, and then otherwise, I would say uh, to look at the Swedish Institute, as we mentioned in the presentation. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then also like external scholarships as well. Uh, there are always different opportunities from different companies or uh, other organizations. We also, I, there should be information uh, on the KTH website under fees and funding uh, if you're looking for some scholarship portals uh, to get your search started. Uh, yes, uh, let's see. And we have a question about uh, the applications deadline. Um, can you clarify the, admi uh, the admissions application deadline? I paid the application fee and applied for a course at KTH, but haven't yet submitted supporting documentation. Well, yeah, the online application uh, deadline is January 15th. Uh, so uh, that de deadline is coming up real soon. Uh, but the deadline to submit supporting documentation is February 1st. And that's, uh, that includes all supporting documentation. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, here's uh, another question. Uh, is there any chance to be part of a sports team while studying a master's program? Uh, do you know? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're a sports team, but I know they're basketball court in the gym. So a lot of people play basketball and floorball. So obviously they organize or join some sort of team. So I'm sure there are a lot of opportunities for, for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, um, here's another question. Uh, again, about documents, uh, how do we apply besides uploading the documents? Do we have to do anything else? Uh, no, not really as a first step, right? Uh, you do your online application at University Admissions uh, uh, and then you upload your documents to uh, your account on University Admissions. You just follow the uh, uh, uploading instructions uh, that you can read more about on universityadmissions.se. Uh, so no, there's not anything more really you have to do. Pay the application fee if yeah. you're required to do so, of course, uh, by February 1st. Um, so. No, just follow the instructions and I'm, I think you're going to be fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, are there Swedish language courses offered for international students here at KTH? Um, the answer to that is yes, actually. There are preparatory courses in Swedish. Uh, it's not at all required uh, that you have any knowledge of Swedish before you come as a master's student, but we do yeah. offer Swedish courses for those yeah. of you who are interested uh, in learning the language while you're here. Yeah. yeah. Or some programs, it is included in some programs to okay. encourage that so people mm -hmm. have an opportunity to learn Swedish while they're studying. Did you yeah. take any preparatory? Not preparatory, courses? but I did Swedish courses before yeah. I started my course. So. Great. Um, uh, here's a question. Does it matter where I graduated from or which university uh, I studied my bachelor's degree? It does because that's a part of the selection um, process. Uh, the program will look at your uh, previous university and its ranking. Uh, so yes, it does matter. Uh, okay. And here's the question about the application fee. Uh, the 900 crown application fee, is it just for KTH or for all applications we make on university admissions? Uh, it's uh, one application fee. So then you can apply for uh, uh, different universities uh, at the same time. Yeah, and you can, up, you can apply for up to four different programs in one application. Yeah, so um, let's see. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I have sent my TOEFL transcript, but it may arrive at QTH later than the 1st of February. Can it work? Well, like we said previously, uh, there's no guarantee that it will be considered if it arrives after deadline. Okay. Um, and here's uh, another one about English. Uh, I'm a Finnish. Wait, sorry. Uh, I'm a Finnish citizen and I completed 58 ECTS of a master's degree and a bachelor's degree from Pakistan. Uh, do I need to take an English language test? Um, well, I guess the answer is yes, uh, because uh, you need to have completed 60 uh, ECTS in a bachelor's degree taught in English uh, in order to qualify for that. From an EU country. From an EU country. Yeah. So uh, yes. I'm not really sure if everything was from Pakistan or... Because I'm well, maybe the master's easy. of master's degree. Uh, yeah, well, 60, uh, but that's like from yeah. an EU country. So, yeah, so, so 60 so probably, ECTS yeah. from an EU country uh, mm -hmm. or an English-speaking country. So uh, I think uh, for the student who's wondering that, uh, the answer is probably yes. Um, but again, uh, you can check on university admissions just to see all the different criteria that you may use uh, to meet the English requirements. Uh, just in case uh, we misunderstood your question. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Maybe you should jump in a bit. Should I jump in? Let me just <laughs> squeeze in here. Um, okay. How? Here's a question about uh, motivation letters. Uh, how does KTH want to receive motivation letters from the United States? Um, should they be mailed or uploaded? Well, uh, all documents, all supporting documents uh, can and should be uploaded, uh, if not otherwise stated. So yes, letters of motivation can definitely be uploaded to your account on university admissions, along with the rest of uh, mm -hmm. the documents. Uh, yeah, and we have had situations where references don't want to give the letters directly to the students. So well, if, those are the letters of recommendation, though. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, if and you, those, yeah, yeah, those can be sent by post yes. uh, to university admissions. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. Uh, Here's another question about scholarships. Uh, how many students are granted the KTH scholarship for the master's program uh, in architecture? Uh, well, there isn't, uh, the answer to that is that there isn't a defined number of um, scholarships earmarked per program. And so it just really depends on who applies. Um, and then the scholarship committee will assess all of the applications together. Um, and so it's just, uh, we want to attract the top applicants and it'll be the top applicants, uh, regardless of which program they're applying to that will uh, be receiving the scholarships. Um, okay, and let's see if there's anything, any other questions? And another one regarding scholarships. Um, you mentioned that SI provides scholarships for foreign students. Uh, are European students eligible for it? Um, I believe the answer to that is uh, unfortunately not. Um, I would recommend having a look at the Swedish Institute website just to see which programs there are, but I, uh, I would say that they're mostly directed to students coming from non-European countries. Um, okay. Um, we have a student saying, if I have a residence permit in Sweden for one or two years, should I pay tuition fees? Um, again, that depends what your residence permit is for. Um, if your residence permit is for studies, then you do, you're not uh, able to have the tuition fee waived. So if your residence permit is based on other reasons, uh, then you might qualify for a tuition fee waiver, but you need to check uh, on university admissions uh, just to make sure 
uh, that your situation falls under that criteria. Again, they have like great information there. Yeah. So, so we would really suggest that you go um, onto that page to have a look. Um, and let's see, uh, is there any Swedish student finance for EU students? Um, not that I am aware of. Uh, since EU students are not required to pay tuition fees, uh, we don't offer any scholarships uh, for EU students. So um, there's always finding a part-time job, I guess, uh, or you can check for scholarships in your home countries as well. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, a question about documentation. I have uploaded all of the supporting documents at university admissions. Uh, do I have to send any documents by post uh, for any verification purpose? Uh, well, like we said earlier, you don't have to. Uh, most documents can be uploaded and if not, it should be stated um, uh, on our website or on university admissions. Uh, so I would um, there are some countries, like the US, for example, that are where you're required to submit, uh, send your, have your university send your transcripts directly uh, to university admissions in Sweden. Uh, so there are some country specific uh, guidelines that you might want to check on universityadmissions.se. Uh, but in general, all documents can be uploaded and you don't have to send the same documents again by post. There's no need for that. At all. Okay. Um, and Julia, maybe you can take this one. Are there any societies or group activities for students at KTH? Yes, student union is very good at organizing different, um, sometimes they organize parties, sometimes they invite students to join different societies. And there's also, there's always something happening in the library as well as a group for language exchange, for example, so people can join and learn a different language every week. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things happening. Um, oh, Julia, maybe here's another one. Uh, can you describe the examination system at KTH? Sure. There are different types of exams and it depends on the course. Some, ex some courses they run for, for example, two months and then at the end there is a written exam and sometimes it is an open book exam. So it's like five hours you can be in the room with other students and you can use all the supporting materials you had during the course to solve the problems. Sometimes it's a closed book exam so you're not allowed to use anything apart from the calculator, for example, and paper. And usually the exams are five hours um, long. Um, there, there's a different type of exams, like an interview exam, for example, when the teacher, if it's a smaller course and the teacher wants to have an interview with a student for an hour to ask about everything, what happened in the course, and you're not allowed to use anything or check your notes or read the book. So there are different types, of, but the written exam is, I think, the most common type. Yeah. Okay. Um, Again, about the KTH scholarship. Uh, do only students who choose KTH as their first priority, uh, are they considered for the KTH scholarship? Uh, yes, so in order to be eligible for the KTH scholarship, uh, you have to choose uh, a KTH program as your first priority. Um, and that would be the only program that you're eligible to receive the scholarship for. Uh, so if you're making your application now, uh, you only need to choose your number one priority uh, program when you're making your KTH scholarship application. Um, here, let's see. Uh, and so here is someone who's wondering about ongoing studies. Uh, if I'm still a sitting student and graduating this summer, uh, and I wish to start my master's in August, I won't have a diploma uh, as a supporting document until then? Well, if you are in your final year, uh, you can apply and if admitted, you will receive conditional acceptance, uh, which means that you will be required to present your bachelor's degree uh, once you arrive here at KTH. Uh, but you will receive more information regarding that if, if that's uh, what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you're still in your last uh, semester right now of your bachelor's, you're very welcome to apply. Oh, we can say that you need to uh, 
uh, submit your transcripts up to date and a statement of enrollment. And you can find a template for this on universityadmissions.se. Um, so, or or your uni your university can issue their own statement as well. Yeah. Um, how long is the summer vacation? Um, well, when when is your last exam? Usually, usually at the end of May. End of May. Okay. Yes, but uh, last year I took a summer course that was in June. So I was um, my vacation was July and August. But if you don't take a summer course, then usually at the end of May, you should be free. Okay, and then courses start again in September. In so. September, or the yeah. end of August. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Let's see, uh, who will be assessing the specific entry requirements? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will be the programs uh, uh, who are uh, assessing the specific uh, entry requirements. So should you have any questions regarding the specific admission requirements, you are most welcome to contact the program directly. Uh, yes. OK. Um, how do I need to submit my recommendation letters? My professor wants to directly send it to the admissions office rather than give it to me for uploading. Well, that's definitely possible. Uh, you can ask them to send um, your uh, letters of recommendation to university admissions directly by post. You can find the address on universityadmissions.se. Uh, but please be sure to ask them to uh, add your application number in the letter, because otherwise um, it won't be possible to match it with your application. OK. Uh, here's the question about receiving the admissions decision, and if I receive an offer, uh, do I need to reply to the offer? And the answer to that is no, you don't have to reply. Um, but if you receive an offer and you don't decide to come to KTH, mm -hmm. you can always let us know, uh, like, no, I won't be able to attend. So another student will be able to take your place. Mm -hmm. um, Here's a question about accommodation. Uh, Julia, how is your accommodation in Stockholm? My accommodation is great. I joined the accommodation queue when I started my course. And this year, I had enough points to get a room in the student accommodation. So it's the room is really big. And I have my own bathroom. And I just share the kitchen with four other people, which is which is great. Mm -hmm. But they're also on KTH website. There are links to different Facebook groups that deal with accommodation, uh, with helping prospective mm -hmm. students to find accommodation. So it is possible to find accommodation on those websites, on Facebook, but also join um, with some friends or students who want to share a bigger house or a flat. That's also possible. Some of my friends do that. And mm -hmm. the standard of accommodation is very high. Uh, great. OK. Um, here's another question about scholarships. Uh, is there a country specific fixed number of students to get scholarship? Uh, the answer to that is no. Um, anyone who applies, uh, we don't discriminate based on country, but we do look at the ranking of the university that you've attended. Um, and again, there are a limited number of scholarships. So it's really just uh, the top applicants who will uh, be receiving one, but uh, it's not a country spit. Specific, specific fixed number. Um, let's see. Uh, here's another question about uh, getting a conditional offer. Uh, what does the application process look like if we are still currently working on our bachelor's degree? Uh, would we hopefully receive a conditional offer until we complete our other degree? Yes. That's, uh, yeah, exactly. That's what we said, that you can uh, receive a conditional offer uh, uh, if you are in your final year of studies. But as I said, you need to uh, submit a statement of enrollment uh, and your transcripts, like up to date of, of the courses taken and the credits taken. OK. Uh, here is someone who's wondering, I've applied in university admissions last year, and now I'm applying again for the same major again. Uh, so should I submit uh, the recommendation letters and motivation letter again or not? 
Uh, well, if you uh, used when now when you applied again, if you used the same account as you did last time, uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. Those uh, documents will be accessible to the program uh, still. So if you don't feel like that you need to update any documents, then no, you don't have to. Uh, okay. Um, okay. And here's a question about uh, a thesis proposal. How much importance does a thesis proposal have in master's application? Uh, well, that is a good question to ask the program coordinator. So if you check uh, on the website for the program that you're interested in, you can actually contact the program coordinator directly. Um, and that applies to any of the uh, anything that's listed as a program specific requirement. Yes, so not all programs will require a thesis proposal. So just check the program description and then contact the program directly. Mm -hmm. um, here's a question that says, hello, I'm from South America. About the documentation, some diplomas and certificates of awards are in Spanish. Uh, should it be translated to English by a specific way or office? Um, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> it it should be made by the translation must be made by by an official authorized uh, translator. Um, but I don't think we have any more guidelines like on what kind of no. Like it doesn't need to be certified, but it does need to be made by an official translator. Yeah. So uh, usually, I think. Yeah, you can find more information regarding mm -hmm. this on university admissions as well. Um, okay. Uh, here's a question about languages. Uh, outside KTH, what language do people speak? Uh, will I be able to manage there with English, or should I learn any other language before coming there? Um, well, we're a multicultural society, yeah. so yeah, there are so a lot of languages. Everyone speaks English <laughs> here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but everyone speaks there. Pretty much everyone speaks English, so you you'll do absolutely fine with just English. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, is it possible to do an internship while being a student? Will KeyTeach support the student to do their internship or student need to apply independently uh, to the company? Um, have you applied for your uh, thesis? Proposal? Yes, I'm going to do my thesis at KTH, mm -hmm. but um, it depends on the program. Sometimes the program director has a lot of contacts with different companies and they can offer you the internship position internally through KTH. But sometimes you can apply yourself and get the internship position and then inform your program director that you have that and that will be your master thesis. And if they don't have anything against it, that's also acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, here's a question from a previous KTH student. Uh, I have already completed a master's program at KTH and now I am applying for another master's program. Shall I apply with my master's diploma or with my bachelor's degree? Uh, my previous master's degree is more relevant uh, for the admission requirements of the new program uh, and therefore I would like to know if I shall submit only the master's degree. Well, the master's degree is not required. Um, the requirement is a bachelor's degree. So that is what you have to submit. Then if you wish to submit your master's degree as well, then yes, fine, but it's not a requirement. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have to attend classes to pass the course? It depends on the course. For some courses, they say that it's compulsory to attend all the lectures and all the seminars. For some courses, it's only compulsory to attend, for example, four seminars. Okay. And for some courses, it's not compulsory at all to attend any lectures. And sometimes they're even recorded and uploaded on the course website. So if the person doesn't have an opportunity to attend all the lectures, they can easily find them on the uh, KTH website on the Canvas and watch them to pass the course okay. yeah all right uh and somebody's interested in uh the difference between the kth scholarship versus the swedish institute scholarship um basically the difference well uh aside from the fact that the kth scholarship uh is our local scholarship uh the kth scholarship covers 
only the tuition fee for a two-year program, uh, where the Swedish Institute scholarship covers both uh, the living costs as well as uh, the tuition. So uh, if you're eligible to apply for both, I would encourage you to do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see. Uh, how long does it take for a Master of Medical Engineering exactly? Is it exactly two years? Um, I would think that the uh, that program is two years long, yeah. 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 Um, if you're interested in the, I mean, like, in the, like, the calendar, uh, the academic calendar, uh, it is available on the website, and you could also check with the program uh, to see what uh, courses are uh, like lectures in the classroom or if you need to be present for those um, yeah but it, it is a two-year program so um, all right uh, and okay can you repeat the deadline for the tuition fee scholarship uh, the deadline to apply for the KTH scholarship is uh, January the 15th so you still have a few days to send an application uh, all right. Well, it looks like we are running out of time here. Maybe, uh, Julia, if you have any advice for prospective students? Uh, yes, I do actually. To get, I think my advice would be to get as much information about the course, um, about who can be the contact person in case something happens or they need to ask some questions and just get together as much information as possible before coming here. Yeah. Okay. So if you still have any questions for us, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us at the KDH Admissions Office or one of our student ambassadors like Julia. Uh, and be sure to follow us on the, our social media channels. Um, right after we finished here, you will receive a link to a, a survey about this webinar. And we would be really grateful if you could take a few minutes uh, to share your thoughts with us. So, um, well, thank you for joining us today uh, and good luck with your applications. We hope to see you in Stockholm by the fall. Um, bye. Bye-bye.